right, what is up you guys, Eugene here, and we are back with another virtual workshop. So uh, this will be the start of a new workshop series before I did all the basic freezes that we do in the stream week by week. And this time we're gonna go over freeze transitions, specifically uh, transitions out of a particular freeze for that week. So for today we'll be doing transitions out of uh, shoulder freeze, so shoulder to stab, shoulder to head freeze, shoulder to elbow, shoulder to handstand, and then shoulder to air baby. Um, so this weekly series will continue with uh, transitions out of other freezes as well. So we're going to be learning trans to transition out of shoulder freeze, out of stab, out of head freeze, out of elbow freeze, and out of handstand. So if you already know how to do some of these transitions, but you're wanting to learn like one specific one, feel free to skip around the video until you find the transition that you're looking for. Otherwise, feel free to follow along even if you already know how to do some of these transitions and use it as a refresher. Maybe there's an approach or detail that you didn't notice before. Um, so if there's a point I go over in here that you aren't aware of before, drop it in the comments below. Or if there's one thing in this workshop that help you out get a certain transition, also drop that in the comments below. Also, I know uh, this is gonna be a longer video, so uh, before we jump in, please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And with that being said, let's jump right in. So general tips for every transition, so this could be for shoulder, uh, out of shoulder, out of stab, out of elbow, it doesn't really matter. So this applies to all the workshops I'll be doing in the future. Basically, when you're transitioning, and this is gonna be two hand transitions, I'll go over one hand transitions briefly, but it won't be two extensive. Um, but for two hand transitions, let's say shoulder freeze, this free arm right here, you can lean on this free arm. So whenever you make the transition, no matter what transition it is, if it's elbow freeze, you can lean on this arm and start by leaning on it a lot. So you can use all your weight on this arm if that lets, lets you pick up whatever uh, freeze you're trying to transition out of. Lean on the arm as much as you can. And then I'm gonna be referring to the two legs as um, two different things. So this leg that's closer to you, I guess like closer to your ear, is gonna be called your inside leg. So it's either gonna be Nike, like straight out like this, or it can be bent. So I'm gonna call this my inside leg. So if I'm gonna be freezing on my right arm, so my left, my left leg will be my inside leg. And then your, my outside leg will be my right leg. And this leg is always gonna pump, no matter what. Whether I'm crunched in, I pump, or I'm in Nike and I pump, this right leg is my pumping leg. I'm gonna call it my outside leg because it sits further away from my head. So um, basically the two roles of these legs is no matter whether you're in squat position or Nike position, the principle is still gonna be the same. With this inside leg, you're gonna pull it over. Even if it's bent, you're gonna use this knee and pull it over. This is gonna keep your hips from falling and sinking low. If you pull it up, it's gonna keep you from, your hips from sinking lower. And now, uh, like I said before, your outside leg or my right leg is always going to be pumping. So your left leg can pump, your inside leg can pump for the transition, but it can also stay straight no matter what, this leg will always pump. So that's something to keep in mind. This leg is always pulling, no matter if it's um, straight or if it's bent. And this leg is always pumping, no matter if this leg is straight or if it's bent. So um, you can pump with both legs, uh, but that inside leg, regardless, needs to pull in towards you. Whenever you're pumping, um, always aim to point up, so your heels should be towards the ceiling. So every time you pump, your, your feet should be parallel with the ceiling and pump straight up. And all the energy is gonna come from your, essentially your thighs, from your knee to your hip. This is where all the, uh, what do you call it? The force is coming from. So from here, and you pump up, everything comes from this segment right here. So if I'm doing shoulder to handstand, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but everything is gonna come from, from the knee to the hip. Everything here, pump up, bring it down. So 
So every time you pump, go straight up as best you can. Your hips are going to be leaning towards um, wherever that inside leg is pulling you. So um, it depends. So for if you're doing elbow freeze, you're not really leaning towards your head as much, um, but you are pulling in this leg right here. So it depends. If you're trying to get to shoulder to headstand, lean your hips all the way over towards your head using this inside leg to pull. It's gonna lead your hips. It's gonna pick up your hips from sinking. So if I'm sinking my hips like this, this leg is gonna help pull those hips right on top of me. So those are the two things. You're gonna use that inside leg to pull, whether it's crunched in or if it's straight, use it to pull you over whatever direction you need to go and then pump straight up with your pumping leg or both legs. So that's gonna be the way you think about how your legs are working. So you can pump up with both legs, just remember that inside leg is gonna be pulling you either towards your head or just pulling in as you pop up to elbow. Um, so it just depends on the transition. So um, I guess for starters, if you're not comfortable with doing transitions, I think from shoulder freeze is a good start. So out of all these transitions, find the one that's easiest for you. Maybe it's shoulder to head, shoulder to stab, Maybe it's elbow freeze to handstand, I don't know. And continue to practice that until you get used to just that pumping motion with your legs. And once you're comfortable with that, um, try and move on to doing other transitions using that pump. So once you get comfortable doing like, let's say shoulder to stab is comfortable for me, uh, just keep doing that until you're used to pumping with those legs. Once you're comfortable pumping with those legs, then you can move on to other transitions and see if that pump translates over. You might have to do some tweaking, might have to get a little bit more practice in, but um, just find one that you're comfortable with for starters. Um, so I guess the way to think about this is think about it like doing a freeze and then the transition is like its own move or the pump, the transitional pump, and then back to the next freeze. So for example, if I do um, like handstand to elbow, this is one freeze. My legs are crunched in and you can also do like uh, Nike legs or, or bent legs. And then this one is the second freeze and you're going to have an intermediary pump that extends out, curls back in. So you're here, both legs closed, oh, both legs closed, pump, bring it back in. So it's going to be freeze, pump, freeze back in that pike freeze or crunch freeze. So your legs should end in the same position where they started. So that's just a general tip. And as you get better, you can start to vary this so it doesn't have, um, so you don't have to end in the same position. Uh, but for the sake of learning, this is the most effective and most consistent method. So whenever I say initial or original leg position, it's either gonna mean tucked or crunched in or piked or like pike Nike, like tucked in, or pike Nike, or crunch legs. Um, so whenever I say initial or original leg position, those are the two positions I could be referring to. Before we get in, I'm not gonna do a tutorial for shoulder freeze because I think um, there are a lot of good tutorials out there for shoulder freeze. But before we jump into it, a few things to keep in mind. Keep your legs tight, keep your core tight, keep your back straight, in your shoulder freeze to keep yourself from rolling back. Notice how my back is straight. If I curl it in, I'm gonna roll onto my back. So when you're doing in your shoulder freeze, keep your back straight. Next one is feel free to lean forward towards your free hand to keep from rolling back as well. So uh, I would be leaning towards you guys, towards the camera. So this free arm with my tattoo on it, I can lean some weight onto this arm right here. Um, but the more comfortable you get, you don't have to do that. Um, but if you're not comfortable, feel free to lean on that free arm. Can you show your support hand placement once more when you're in shoulder freeze? Yes. I'll show the front position and I'll show the position where pretty much like the other position. So basically my free arm is like halfway in between. So like, you know how I mentioned that um, elbow freeze, like halfway down and shoulder width across, that's kind of like the same principle, but instead I'm just bringing this elbow freeze 
back in and doing the same thing. So when I roll up to elbow freeze, I get into that same position. And then same thing with, um, for this angle, I'll do the same thing. Same thing, uh, halfway up, shoulder width across, down, and then I just collapse. And that's kind of where I keep my arm. So when I pump up to elbow, it's already in place for two hands, if that makes sense. But yes, you want to be in this position for elbow freeze. So think about your end product. If you're just gonna roll up into elbow freeze, you want your free arm to be here if you're going two hands. So uh, a good shoulder freeze from here, all, it, all you're doing is rolling up is to roll back down and catch it in shoulder freeze. So this would be, you know, hand placement. So once you roll up to elbow freeze, you're halfway up, shoulder width across, and your arm is placed on the ground here. And then roll back down, catch. So if you take that same hand position, place it here, roll it down. Now this kind of a good range for shoulder freeze. And then also last tip, the arm that's down in shoulder freeze, keep this arm flexed. So as you're on the ground, this arm, you wanna keep it flexed. For each of these, I'm gonna be going over, um, like going down, so if like from elbow to shoulder, which we're not doing today, that'll be the elbow um, workshop, and then going up. So pretty much everything here is going up. Shoulder to stab, shoulder to head, shoulder to elbow, shoulder to handstand, and shoulder to air baby. So we're gonna be doing five different transitions. So whatever freeze you intend to learn from this list will require you to have both freezes down to make this transition happen. Um, the better your freeze is for each of these, so let's say I have a good uh, shoulder freeze and I have a good stab freeze, uh, compared to a good shoulder freeze versus a good uh, a bad elbow freeze, like I'm not good at my elbow freeze, my shoulder to stab is gonna be easier of a transition than the shoulder to elbow. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have you know one of the freezes down, it's gonna be a little bit harder of time, but it's not impossible. Like I said before, a reminder, for all the transitions, leg principle stays the same. Uh, the hand position changes depending on the freeze. So if I'm going from shoulder to elbow, shoulder to stab, my hand position is gonna change. And for some of the transitions, you need to rely more on the leg principle of like pulling and pumping. And for others, you may have to use your head to provide leverage and I'll get into that. With this first one, shoulder to stab. So um, shoulder to stab, you're gonna start in shoulder freeze with your initial leg position or your first leg position. And then you're, what you're gonna do is lean your body towards your head. So I have some weight on the side of my head right now. So not only do I have my weight on my shoulder and my arm, but also the side of my head. Leaning towards my head, I'm gonna pull with this leg, whether it's bent or it's straight, I'm gonna pull pretty much towards my ear. And with this leg or both, you're gonna pump up and then bring it back in. You're gonna pump up as you pump up, um, you're gonna lean towards your head more and use that leverage that you have. And then you're gonna lean towards your head and then pick up and try to replace that hand to stab position. So you're here, flex, lean, pull, and pump. And remember, at the same time, you can, you can lean onto that free arm. So that's gonna be the first one, shoulder to stab. And then notice as I do this, I'm returning back to the original leg position I was in stab. So notice, I'm gonna do a pike to Nike, like this, leaning this same leg position as soon as I make the transition, same thing. I make that transition and snap into that second position. This one's a little bit straightforward to explain, easier said than done, but just remember, lean towards your head, use that inside leg and pull towards you and over you, and then pump. You can either pump both legs or just your right leg. If you pump with both legs, it's gonna look like this. And if you pump with a one leg and pipe to Nike, it's gonna look like this. So if you're doing it two hands, you can lean on your free hand and you can use your head as well to make that transition happen. Uh, I'll touch on this briefly, but I won't get too far into it. For one hand, going from shoulder to stab, uh, it's the same principle that applies. You still lean on your head, but this time you pick up off your head as soon as you get into the stab. So um, you're here, 
You pump up, lean onto your head, pull, catch and stab. Now, if you want to go to air chair or side chair, like one hand pickup, as soon as I pick up one hand, I lift my head off the ground. I don't know if I can really do it, but we'll see. We're here. And that's shoulder to stab. So it's the same thing, but emphasized. You're not going to have to lean on, you're not going to have, um, you're not going to be able to lean onto your free arm at all, obviously because it's one hand. So everything else has to be emphasized and that's going to be with one hand everything moving forward anything you want to do with one hand the pump has to be emphasized the lean has to be more emphasized so just keep that in mind just keep in mind principle for all these transitions is going to be the same so if you get the idea for one down you just need to apply that same concept to the next one so let's move on to shoulder to head so shoulder to head is more or less the same thing but um, instead of doing, um, getting into stab, obviously you're going to replace your hand in a different position. So you start off in shoulder freeze with the initial leg position. Again, either piked Nike or crunched lean towards your head. But now to get to your head, you're going to pull a lot more with that inside leg and you're going to pump at the same time. And now instead of replacing your, your stab hand, moving it to that, to there, you're going to lean up and this arm that's on the ground, you're going to replace it as you come up to your head. So it might be a little bit easier than picking up to stab because you don't have to replace or catch anything, but catch it in the tripod position to support yourself. So you're here, lean, Lean towards your head. You can lean weight on this free arm. Lean towards your head, pump up, and pull as you pump. That's gonna pull you to your head freeze. And remember, when you catch your head freeze, you can make that tripod position between your head and your hands. And then for head freeze, return to your original leg position in head freeze. Um, and like I said before, you can always change it up later on, but just for the sake of learning it and practicing it, getting it down, I would suggest going back to that original leg position that you're in. So if you started in crunch legs, pick back up to head, pull it back once you're there in crunch legs. So just keep in mind for shoulder freeze and a lot of these transitions, you're gonna be moving your arm. So let's say for shoulder to stab or shoulder to head, my hand placement is gonna shift, obviously because my hand's not on the ground. It's here. Once I pick up this stab arm that's on the ground, it's gonna shift. Pick up and shift. And you know, do it just like you would do like a stab freeze or a baby freeze. Same thing with head. As soon as you pick up, position the arm just like you would in a head freeze. All right, let's move on to shoulder to elbow. So shoulder to elbow is gonna be a bit different from these first two. So with shoulder freeze, um, with this one from shoulder freeze, uh, the initial leg position is the same, but this time you don't want to lean towards your head as much as you do towards your free arm. So now, um, instead of leaning this way towards my head, I'm gonna be more focused on leaning towards you guys or towards my free arm. So if I'm here, if I'm trying to go from shoulder to elbow, I'm not going to be doing this. I'm going to be aiming, leaning towards you guys, towards the camera. All right, so lean towards your free arm. And the motion is going to be, you're going to be rolling a bit as you pick up to your elbow. And I'll show you from a different angle in a second as I do it. Um, but the pull and the pump is the same as normal. So even though you're not leaning towards your head, you're still going to be pulling this leg in, whether it's crunched, or whether it's straight, you're still gonna be pulling it in because it's gonna help you snap into the freeze. But my head, I'm not leaning it as much. I can pick it up off the ground and I can lean towards you guys. And like I said before, you're gonna try and like, essentially like roll towards, um, towards your free arm or where I guess you're facing. So like, let's say I'm doing it uh, facing 
this way. I'm, you're gonna watch me roll a little bit forward as I pick up to my elbow. So I'm here and I'm gonna roll this way a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm gonna, I'm slightly rolling. as I pick up. So I'm kind of rocking towards my elbow. Um, and the way I like to do this, I already have my arm positioned on the ground and really I'm leaning forward and picking up on it. So my arm, my forearm, as it's in front of me, it's not really moving at all. So notice this stays in the same position as I pick up. So elbow position stays the same. And that's what makes it different from the previous two. Shoulder to stab and shoulder to head. So instead of replacing your hand to catch or reposition like we did the prior two, you're gonna push from your shoulder and extend to, to make sure you go up all the way. Otherwise, you're gonna end up in a T-Rex, unless that's something you wanna do. So what I mean by that is, as I push up to elbow, you wanna extend your shoulder all the way and make sure you get as much height as you can between your shoulder and the ground. Because if I don't, and I try to push up, see this angle right here? Very, very low angle. So as you push up with your shoulder, you wanna try to open it out as far as you can if you don't, you're just gonna be stuck with this chicken wing T-Rex right here. So make sure as you push up, you're gonna extend your shoulder all the way. So here. Oh. All right, and same thing, just like the other, um, other transitions, always return to that original leg position in your elbow freeze. So if you started in an Ike freeze, Extend, snap it back into a Nike freeze. And for this one also, just keep in mind, you can, you, as you use um, your free arm, if you're doing it two hands, you can lean a lot on your free arm and pretty much roll towards it. So I would, the way I would do it is put all my weight on my free arm and roll towards it and try to pick up on my elbow. Once I have my elbow locked in support, then I can start shifting my weight back. Sorry, if I were to do it with two hands, that's kind of the thought process I would use. So for example, if I'm doing this view and I'm using two hands, I would lean all my weight on this arm as I roll up. Once it's up, then I can sink my weight onto my elbow. So here, and there's the pickup. For one hand, you're gonna have to rely on that roll up a bit more and everything will be way more exaggerated. So if you're having trouble getting any of these, um, any of these transitions, you're probably needing to exaggerate something a little bit more, whether that's the pump or the lean. Um, and this goes for any transition. If you're struggling with any of them, probably try pumping harder, leaning, or maybe just working on that second freeze that you're trying to transition into. But uh, anyways, back to one hand, uh, again, you're gonna have to rely on that roll up a bit more. So everything is gonna be way more exaggerated. Pump harder, emphasize that shoulder extension. You have to roll forward even more and you have to flex even, even more than you would doing a two-handed one. So you have really no room to relax in this. So as you're doing one hand, really emphasize that roll and pick up. Pump harder, emphasize that shoulder extension. So if you're in um, shoulder freeze trying to do one hand, Pick up. Everything needs to be emphasized, right? So I'll show you guys the roll one hand. I'll roll this way. Hopefully you guys can see it. And that's pick up to one hand. So unlike, you know, to stab or to head, um, you're not leaning towards your head. You're more leaning forward to whatever direction you're facing. That's gonna be the biggest differentiator. But um, you're gonna to have to lean just as much as any other transition. It's only a change of direction. 
shoulder to handstand. So this one is going to be obviously the most difficult one. Um, you're going from the lowest freeze all the way to the highest freeze. And um, with this one, it's going to be this more or less the same as um, shoulder to stab, shoulder to head. You're going to be leaning towards your head. Um, and just like, um, you know, those first two, the more you lean towards your head, the more leverage you're going to have. Um, so um, the only difference between everything else is that um, the way you replace your hand position is um, really important because once you catch the handstand, um, it's gonna de where you place your hand is going to determine if you walk or if you can hold it in place as you pick up. Yeah, like I said before, you're going to be leaning back, uh, like I would be leaning towards my head. It's important to note, um, like for example, um, if I'm doing a shoulder freeze like this, facing you guys, and my fingers for my free hand are pointing straight, imagine a line right here where my hands would be if I did a handstand like this. So this position, this spot is where I want my hand to go as I pick up from shoulder freeze. So for example, if I did a shoulder freeze and I picked up and landed all over here, I'm shifting my weight and it's gonna cause me to walk in my, in my handstand. But if I get it more on the spot, I can hold the handstand. Obviously it's not perfect, but uh, you get the idea. So um, if you pick up with your hand position off, it's gonna drastically throw off your ending handstand. So the same principles are gonna apply. You're gonna be leaning towards your head, pull with your leg, whether it's crunched or nike And as I lean towards my head, I'm gonna be putting pretty much all my weight on my free arm and my head. And I'm gonna pump basically as hard as I can. You're gonna pump as hard as you can. And then once you're up and once you pump, that's as much as, that's as, much as you're gonna get. So um, make sure you're putting everything into that pump, especially when you're learning this. And then replace that hand quickly. So pump up, pick it up. And if you have to push a little bit, like if, you, if your elbow bends a little bit, it's fine. Just pick it back up into that handstand, it's good practice. So um, just like the other freezes, return to that original leg position in handstand, whether that's crunch legs, um, Nike freeze or Nike position. And keep in mind for this, you're gonna have to pull and pump way more compared to all the other transitions out of shoulder freeze. Keep in mind the line right here, that's where you want ideally your hands to be. If it's kind of in the, in the ballpark, it's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. But just remember, lean. I'll be leaning towards my arm, my head, and also putting my weight onto my free hand. And as I pick up, pump with everything I have. Try and catch it. If my arm is bent a little bit, push it straight up. Finish the freeze. So you're here. There you go. Shoulder to handstand. Yes. Commit to that pump. So when I was doing, um, you know, when I was practic practicing shoulder to handstand, most of the times it's pretty normal to have your arms bent and all that stuff. Um, but just getting used to that pump and leaning is really the main point. So even if you're doing it and you're catching it like with your arms bent, you know, your arm is out here, whatever, just practice um, just getting that, doing as much as you can with the pump, putting as much force as you can into it because you're pretty much training to put everything into your pump and the reason you're probably catching it you know like way off or your elbows aren't locking all the way is because you're not used to kicking it all the way like that even if you have your arms bent even if you have a weird arm position or whatever it's fine um, really just focus on putting everything into your pump and also like the direction of your lean those are the two main things so even if you're not getting any of these um, freeze combos down or these uh, transitions down um, it's probably just because you're not used to either the ending freeze or you're not used to You know the amount you're pumping or the amount that you're leaning so Even if you're not catching it. Just continue on and pick it back up uh, if I'm doing shoulder to handstand and Like my arms are bending and all that stuff um, really the point is just to um, Get used to pumping all the way and getting used to this pump will also help you get used to pumping for 
other transitions as well. So if you're doing shoulder to uh, elbow, shoulder to stab, you're gonna get an even stronger pump if you can do shoulder to handstand, right? So it all translates over and you'll see it more so when you start transitioning like out of other freezes, like you know from elbow to handstand, from stab to handstand, everything like that, you're gonna use that same pump. So the more used to the pump you are, uh, the better off you're gonna be in the long run. Oh yes, yes, shoulder to handstand is probably the highest level transition um, as far as like the amount of pumping you need and the amount of balance at the end that you need. Um, so shoulder to handstand is, um, even though I'm teaching in this first workshop, um, I'm teaching basically like going up. So it'll be shoulder freeze this week, the next week will be stab, and then it just goes up to handstand transit, up until handstand transitions. But yeah, shoulder to handstand, super advanced. Um, if you can't get it, I wouldn't worry about it, honestly. Um, I don't really see a practical need for it. It's just nice to have and it's nice to apply, but if you don't have it, it's fine. But yes, um, shoulder freeze to stab, shoulder freeze to head, even to elbow freeze. Um, you know, start with those first. Find whatever works for you um, in the beginning and get comfortable with that, get used to the pump. And then once you're used to that, then you can start you know, applying it. And if you get shoulder to handstand, great. Like it's gonna help in a lot of ways, even though you may not be using that transition directly. Shoulder to air baby, if you can shoulder to handstand and handstand to air baby, you don't even need handstand to air baby. If you have air baby, it's fine. Um, then this will essentially be a combination of those two. Um, so the pickup for this, for shoulder to air baby, it's essentially, it's gonna feel like an in-between between your stab and your handstand range. So it's gonna be the amount of pump that you need is gonna be in between the pump you need for a stab, more, more than a stab, but less than a handstand. You don't really need a handstand as much. So if you have a shoulder freeze to handstand and your arms are bending a little bit, um, maybe try going to air baby. Like, if your arms are bending a little bit already, it might say, and you're like holding yourself up with your legs, you know, kind of like this. You know, maybe try going to Air Baby. But um, the principle is going to be the exact same as shoulder to handstand. Um, you're going to be leaning towards your head, pull with your inside leg, pump with your outside leg, or both. And the more you lean towards your head, again, the more leverage you're going to have. So you're going to replace your um, handstand hand. It doesn't have to be in that line anymore. It can be if you want, um, but it's not mandatory. Uh, but whatever, wherever you feel um, comfortable with your air baby stab, you're going to place it there. You know, for me, it's like probably right here. So I'd probably catch it in this position and then pump up. If your arm bends, it's okay. If it's straightened, that's great. It doesn't really matter so much in my opinion. Um, and it's just, instead of returning to the original leg position as you go to air baby, um, and this is what's going to make it different is notice when you air baby, my hips are facing the ground. You know, my feet are pointing towards the ground, but in my shoulder freeze, hips are pointing up, feet are pointing up, everything's pointing up. And pretty much every transition we've done, elbow, stab, headstand, your feet always end up pointing up in the same position. Now it's gonna be different. As you pick up, as you pick up from shoulder, you're gonna rotate those hips downwards and that's what's gonna be the tricky part. So you're gonna have your hips and they're gonna rotate downwards as you, after you pump up, you plant your hand. As you're falling into that position, you're gonna rotate your hips downwards. For all the other transitions, heels were pointing up for the most part. And then now um, you're gonna make uh, the transition and the attempt to land in the air baby with your hips turning to face the ground as well as like your feet or your heels. Here's what it's gonna look like. You're here, everything's pointing face up. After I pump, everything points face down. So that's gonna be the trickiest part, but I think if you can do it to handstand or get close to it, um, try it out because uh, I think the progression as you go up from shoulder to handstand, um, you, I think you're gonna, as you try and do it, you're gonna snag yourself uh, noticing that your hips are facing towards the ground anyways. So like let's say I'm doing step or uh, shoulder to handstand. 
and I can't quite do it yet, you'll notice that my hips are kind of already facing downwards. So that would be um, maybe a way you could transition into the Air Baby just to get used to it for the start. But from a higher level, um, the clean way to do it would be shoulder freeze, pump. As soon as you pump and replace your arm and around this, the stab range, you're gonna turn those hips and catch an Air Baby. And like I said before, the amount of pump is going to be a little bit more than stab and a little bit less than handstand. So it's going to be in that range of stab and handstand. A little bit more than stab, a little bit less than handstand. So again, um, shoulder to air baby. You're here. Shoulder to air baby. That is the last transition for the shoulder freeze workshop. And also I should note for um, shoulder to air baby, I can't do it one hand. So whenever I do it, I, I, all my weight is leaning towards my free arm. As soon as I pump, lean towards that free arm. Pump, lean, catch, turn those hips down. So pump, lean, and then re-catch with, um, with that stabbing arm, and then turn those hips down. So pump, lean, catch, turn those hips face down. And that's gonna be the transition. That was one note I forgot to mention. Pump, lean towards your free arm, reposition your stab arm, turn those hips face down and catch. Now it's gonna be difficult because um, if you're not used to catching an air baby or transitioning into and out of air baby, but like I said before, the more comfortable you are with both freezes at the, at the ends, whether a shoulder freeze, air baby, shoulder freeze, handstand, it's just a matter of, the better you are at those freezes, then it's just a matter of getting used to the pump, getting used to leaning, and being aware of you know how much and what direction. Well, that is it. If you watched all the way up until this point, you are a real one. If you enjoyed this, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I will see you all in the next one. Peace.